Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Games I Speak. I'm your host, Gio. Uh, today we have a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. Alright, so the big news of the week was PlayStation 5. They finally revealed their uh, price range for their consoles, so let's kind of go through here, and then we can discuss at the end. Um... So the PS5, they're going to have two versions. Uh, they've already announced that, but they're going to have the physical version, which has a uh, HD, um, Ultra HD Blu-ray um, drive, and the other version, which is all digital. And as far as I know, the digital version just doesn't have that drive. Um, I think that's the only difference between them. So... The, it launches on November 12th, and it's launching in the U.S., Japan, Canada, Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea. And then on the 19th of November, it launches globally. Um, so the pre-orders were already started, but they were a disaster, and I'll, I'll go through that after this video. Um, now, you have the main features are custom CPU and GPU. 4K graphics, um, ray tracing support, ultra high speed SSD with integrated input output. Um, that's supposed to increase or decrease loading times. 3D audio and haptic feedback with the dual sense controller. So those are the main features of the PlayStation 5. Um, so there were some new games announced. We have Devil May Cry Special Edition, Final Fantasy 16. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, Hogwarts Legacy, and a new God of War, which it was just a like a teaser trailer. There really wasn't anything there. Um, now, some good news. Uh, the launch titles were announced. We have Astro's Playroom, Demon Souls, which I made a video last week speculating that it might be a launch title. I'm very glad that it is. Destruction All-Stars, uh, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, and Sackboy A Big Adventure. So those are the launch titles. Um, <laughs> like I said, obviously I'm super excited for Demon Souls. And then the next thing they announced was a PlayStation Plus collection. So what's the PlayStation Plus collection? Well, for PlayStation uh, Plus members um, that have a PS5, you're going to get... Um, a curated library of PS4 games. Um, some of the games announced in there are Batman Arkham Knight, Bloodborne, amazing game, Fallout 4, I, I also like that game, God of War, Monster Hunter World, Persona, Persona 5, and more. So they picked like some heavy hitters so that people who buy the PS5 early, they're going to have some of the better uh, PS4 titles to play. You know, since... After you beat the launch titles, there's not much going on. So, um, so basically, uh, I'm happy with the Dark Souls launch date. Um, I think that uh, they did a good job with the prices. Um, four ninety five uh, or four ninety nine. That's doable. That's doable, and I know they're taking a loss on it even selling it at that price range. And then $399 for the digital, that's a different route that Microsoft took. Um, Microsoft said, hey, we're going to give you a cheap Xbox One S. It's not going to be as powerful as the Xbox Series X, but you're going to have access to all the same games on Game Pass. So they took a different route. Um, so I just want to say that I... Uh, said that I would pre-order it if Dark or Demon Souls was a launch title. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I did. And um, so next up, let's cover what happened with the pre-orders. Um, so basically, uh, gamers found themselves frustrated and let down by PS5's disastrous pre-orders. So as you can see here, 
you can see what's going on now on eBay. Look at this markup. We have, <laughs> wow, new place, Sony PlayStation 5 cardboard. Amazing. Look at that. That's selling for 424 uh, but no, see how you have these uh, PlayStation 5 pre-orders? They're reselling for around 700 to a grand right now. So, yeah, that's not good. Um, that's not what, uh, you know, people wanted to see happen. Um, so basically what happened was um, each retailer kind of like jumped the gun <laughs> and they just decided, oh, I'm going to open pre-orders now. And unless you were subscribed to each one of their Twitter pages, you had no idea what pre-orders were going on. So um, here, I experienced this. A lot of people experienced this. I was very frustrated because I missed out on the first window. I happened to snag a random one on Target, but... It was luck. I mean, I had like 10 browser or 10 browser tabs open to all the different stores. And I was just refreshing all day, all day until I found one on Target. <laughs> so I'm not happy about that. Um, so basically what happened was pre-orders went up shortly after the PS5 presentation. Best Buy, GameStop, and Walmart sold out within like minutes. Um, I happened to be washing dishes when it happened. Josie sent me a text. He's like, pre-orders are up. I was washing dishes. By the time I got back, they were all gone. Uh, um, GameStop took advantage of the situation and sold in, they sold very expensive bundles. I hate when they do that. Um, but they did it. Um, people bought them all. I mean, they had bundles going around $800. Yeah, they were giving you uh, like an extra controller, two games, and um, uh, like a PlayStation time. But yeah, I mean, I hate when they do that. Just sell the console. Um, and then uh, Amazon opened up pre-orders at midnight with no warning. So <laughs> that was a complete mess. Obviously, those were gone by the time anyone woke up. And... There's a new, so basically some users were able to get PS5s. I was lucky I was able to get one, but a lot were kind of left out in the dark. And a lot of uh, people who are reselling, as you can see, I showed you the eBay page. They're making a killing right now. So I hate to see that. The more resales you see on place, on uh, eBay, um, the more of a like messed up rollout that this was so um yeah so all it does is just make people you know kind of upset at sony that they didn't like control their pre-order window so yeah i mean if you weren't able to get one you can do what i did which is madness just have up a bunch of tabs and try to keep re refreshing um i know sony sent out some um notifications to people who signed up for the pre-order page i was one of those i never got one but some people got them so yeah you're just gonna have to wait for the next wave and hope to get one so all right um next up we have uh turns out all the games in the super mario uh 3d all-stars are emulated um with a bit of uh, tweaking going on. So this is a, there's a video by Digital Foundry. Um, great video, they go into depth of like what was done for each of the games. So I'll, I'll link this in the description. So essentially um, I played the game, uh, I played Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Galaxy last night. Um, I had a lot of fun. I honestly didn't have many complaints. Um, and I, th yes, while these are emulated, um, 
there are some enhancements so let me go through that um super mario 64 that was upscaled to 720p um still has a 4x3 aspect ratio they could have i would have liked to see them change that to a 16x9 so it runs better on newer tvs but they didn't um the ui has been redrawn at higher resolutions um, some items such as like paintings, flags, and enemies have been uh, uh, upscaled to higher resolution so they look better. Very low input lag, which I noticed in the game. It was very responsive. I was using my um, Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Um, still 30 frames per second, so they didn't upgrade it to 60 frames per second. Um, that's a big complaint. And there's a slight audio delay. Um, so Super Mario Sunshine, that's uh, 1080p. Uh, so that was uh, switched to a 16 by nine aspect ratio, which is, it looks very nice. Looks better in HD than the original. Um, updated UI and increased resolution on textures. No GameCube controller support and still running at 30 frames per second. And then Mario Galaxy 1080p. <laughs> updated UI and increased resolution on textures. Video has been re-rendered at a higher resolution. Um, does For me, it didn't work well with my Pro Controller, so I switched to the Joy-Cons because you have that little aiming mechanic where you can shoot the stars at people, so I, I found it easier to play with the Joy-Con. Um, and it runs at a full 60 frames per second. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, unless you have the original hardware um, and unless you're running like those like uh, 60 frames unlocked versions on emulators, this is, I think it's worth getting it and, and replaying these on your Switch, so. Um, all right, next up we have Final Fantasy 16. So that was announced during the PS5 announcement, but I kind of wanted to like delve into it a little bit. Um, because obviously it's big news whenever a new Final Fantasy game is announced. All right, so. Final Fantasy 16 has been announced for release on the PS5. All right, this, <laughs> so this guy, he's not the main character. He looks like he's like, um, he looks like he's the main antagonist uh, in the game. So, all right, it's a standalone single player action RPG. It's produced by, I don't know how to say this. <laughs> I always mess up Japanese names. Um, Naoki Yoshida. And it's directed by Hiroshi Takai. Um, it's going to release in 2021. Um, takes place in a medieval European setting. And you play as a bodyguard, this guy, um, for a young boy named Joshua who in the in the trailer it looked like he could like summon a phoenix um and i think they were calling the um they don't call him materia i think or they don't call i, I forget what they um ancients or whatever they call them icons i think in this game so i think the boy has magical powers that you're protecting um so the enemy forces I, I caught I caught a glimpse of this in the trailer. I believe they're called uh, mercurial vipers and you can see this tattoo on his face. I don't know if he's one of them or if he has anything to do with it, but I think he is. Um so yeah, uh that's it um for Final Fantasy 16. Um I have to see more. Um, I'm very interested in the game, but I need to know more. Um, <laughs> the trailer overall, though, was very kind of like generic. 
Um, and it was kind of plain. The story seemed generic and the graphics seemed kind of plain. Um, so yeah, I got to see more to get me hyped on it. Um, I hope it's good. Um, but it's looking like it might be around like Final Fantasy 13 territory, which some people liked, some people didn't like. So, um, all right. Next up, we have Demon's Souls confirmed as a launch title for the PlayStation 5. So, yeah, I'm very excited. And like I said before, I put out a video um, kind of like contemplating this last week. Um, so, it's a true remaster of the original Demon's Souls that was on the PS3. Um, it's developed by Blue Point Games. Uh, and it looks stunning. I mean, look at these graphics. This is obviously, uh, I don't know if this is a boss or just a, uh, an enemy. But um, yeah, I mean, look at it. It looks beautiful. Um, now, these screenshots show like you're kind of zoomed, zoomed in here. Um, so I think it has a more zoomed in view than the original. Uh, like I said, the bosses look very detailed. The combat looks fun and engaging. Um, the art style is very consistent to the original. Um, and yeah, I mean, what can I say? I pre-ordered it along with the PS5. Um, <laughs> this game is definitely a console seller for me. So I can't wait to play it. Um, and it's the reason why I pre-ordered the PS5. Um, so, all right. Next up. Control developer 505 Games claimed they couldn't give digital deluxe owners of Control a free upgrade for next gen, but it seems they lied about it. So what does that mean? Well, <laughs> actually, let's... Um, so basically, they announced that they were going to come out with an Ultimate Edition, in which case they were going to give a free next-gen upgrade to anyone that bought the, um, the Ultimate Edition. Now, players asked, hey, why can't you upgrade the digital deluxe version of the game? And 505, you can read their statement right here. And I'm going to read this for you. The upgrade path that we are offering is only possible when upgrading from the same version of the game as we are only doing an additional development on Control Ultimate Edition on the next-gen platforms. We are unfortunately... Unable to offer an upgrade path to all existing control players. We understand how this might upset a number of players, but you will still be able to play the 2019 edition of Control and each expansion on the new platforms. So, why did I say that this is a lie? Well, here, check this out. This is a screenshot from a player where you can clearly see Control Ultimate Edition appeared as purchased. So what does that, what does that mean here? Well, this player <laughs> has the Deluxe Edition. They don't have the Ultimate Edition. And it says purchased. So what does that mean? Um, well, <laughs> it means that it, the, the software believes that there's an upgrade path if you have Digital Deluxe. So maybe 505 Games isn't being completely uh, transparent here with the situation. Maybe they can upgrade the Digital Deluxe version. Maybe they just don't want to. Maybe they want to sell more copies of the same game. I don't know, but this doesn't look good. And I feel that... Gamers are justifi justifiable to, to uh, approach anything 505 Games says uh, like as questionable in the future. So 
this is not a good look for 505 games. And if they can make the game uh, expanded, they should do it. They should do it. So, yeah. All right, next up. We had a... Um, so Nintendo announces Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of uh, Ruin in their latest Nintendo Direct Mini. So let's go through this. Monster Hunter Rise is a new Monster Hunter action RPG where you can fly everywhere. This releases March 26, 2021. Um, Monster Hunter Stories, Wings of Ruin. This is a more uh, story-driven um, version of uh, Monster Hunter. And see, if you look here, the, even the art style is different. Um, so you're a monster writer that befriends iconic monsters from the series. So this is a bit of a different approach. Instead of like killing them, you're, you're friends with them. <laughs> Um, and then we have, uh, Ori in the Will of the Wisps. So this is, uh, there's a special edition, uh, releasing. It looks beautiful. You can buy it. I forget the name of the company, um, but you can look it up. It's like a box set. Um, you have Fitness Boxing 2, um, so I actually tried this for a little while. It's fun. Um, it's a good workout. And it teaches like the basics of boxing. Um, and then you have... Uh, I don't never know how to say this game. Disgaea 6 or Dis... Disgaea 6. <laughs> Defiance of Destiny. You have Hades. Um, I did a, a early access review on this. Very difficult dungeon crawler, but love the art style and it's a lot of fun. Um, Empire of Sin, Sniper Elite 4, uh, PGA Tour 2K21, The Long Dark, uh, that's a survival game. Balan Wonderland, this releases March 26, 2021. So this is actually, I believe it's made... Um, by one of the creators of Sonic, or it's designed by one of the creators of Sonic. So I'm definitely interested in this. I love the Sonic franchise. Um, but apparently you collect different outfits and each outfit gives you like a different uh, attribute. So they're kind of like the classes and there's like 80 different outfits. <laughs> so Rune Factory 5, that looked pretty cool. I believe it's an RPG. Um, so... Yeah, I think this is a um, a step in the right direction uh, for Nintendo. This is definitely better than their last few Nintendo Direct Minis. Um, so yeah, if they can keep this up, I think it's a good approach. Um, and I'm definitely uh, looking out for Battle in Wonderland. All right. Next up, we have... Microsoft launches their Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. And it includes 150 games playable across multiple devices. So this is actually uh, pretty interesting here. Um, I've been talking, we've been talking about it on this podcast for a while. Um, they finally launched, it launched on the 15th. Um, so there's a trial for $1 uh, for the first month. And $14.99 a month after that. It has 150 games. So here's a list of the games. Um, let's kind of just briefly arc um, Batman Arkham Knight. You have uh, Black Desert, Bloodstained Ritual of Night. That's a good game. Carry On, Cross Code, Darksiders Genesis, and Darksiders 3. I actually did a review for Darksiders 3. <laughs> Dead by Daylight, um, Destiny 2, I, I think everyone was expecting that, um, let's see, Fallout 76, you have Forza, 
Gears of War 1 Ultimate Edition, Gears of War 4, Gears of War 5, and I believe they're going to put out Gears Tactics. May, no, or maybe that's just going to be a launch title for the um, Xbox Series S. I can't, X, I can't remember. Uh, Guacamelee, Halo 5 Guardians, I didn't like that too much. Uh, Halo Wars 1 and 2. Halo, the Master Chief Collection, that's good. Um, Hellblade says Senua's Sacrifice. I never actually played that. But yeah, I mean, oh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Uh, don't even get me started on this game. So yeah, there's a lot of games here. Micro Minecraft Dungeons. Um, and um, yeah, I think if you're kind of like a... You just want a place to play all your games and you're not too worried about like collecting like me and Josie do. Um, oh, nice. They have uh, three Yakuza games on here as well. Um, then, yeah, I think this... Oh, Warhammer Vermin, Vermintide 2. That's, that's a great game. That's a great game. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where I think it could be a Google Stadia killer. Um, <laughs> as much as people complain that Xbox doesn't have the games that like PlayStation and Switch do, I mean, that, that's quite a package of games right there. I think it's going to... I don't see how Google, Google Stadia can compete. Um, so this might be the ultimate choice in cloud gaming, like an all-for-one package. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the Xbox Series S sells. They're really pushing this package. So they're hoping that like people who are interested in the Xbox Series S, they're going to look at it as like a cheap gaming PC almost, and they're just going to buy this package and they're going to play the games on there. So, And I'm also tempted to try the $1 trial. It is $1. And I know people hate trials because they forget to cancel and they get charged, but like there's like services like privacy.com where you can actually like make a uh, like a temporary credit card so they can't charge you again so yeah i mean i'm i'm thinking about it <laughs> i mean that's a lot of games i mean i have a lot of games already but that's a lot of games all right so um next up facebook's oculus quest 2 is now available for pre-order so People claimed it was a leak. I don't know if it's a leak. I think Facebook did it on purpose, um, but let's see. And obviously they were ready to start selling, so I don't think it was a leak. So the difference between um, this and the Oculus Quest, which I have an Oculus Quest, I love it. Um, this has an upgrade in resolution. So this is uh, 1832 by 1920 pixels per eye. Um, six gigabytes of RAM, Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 platform requires Facebook login. I railed against this a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think it's stupid, um, but they're forcing people to do it. Um, lighter, it's claimed to be lighter and more comfortable. So this is what it comes with. It comes with a uh, the headset. Two touch controllers, a charging cable, power adapter, and glasses spacer. They're still not including the PC cable, which I find kind of annoying. Um, <laughs> so it's $299 for the 64 gigs and two hundred and uh, or three ninety nine for the 256 gigs. Pre-orders are available now. You can actually pre-order now if you want. Um, so I think it looks just like the first quest. Obviously, it's a different qu uh, color. The first quest is black. Uh, this one's white. Um, they say it's more comfortable. They add a little more features. Better resolution, better processor, more RAM. I'm not convinced. Uh, I think I want to wait until there's 4K in each eye then I'll consider uh, purchasing um, the next generation. So once it's 4K, that's when VR is going to turn into to what VR is supposed to be.
because you can still kind of see the little gaps in the pixels here and there, but man, and then when it turns 8K, whoo, can't wait to see that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I'm going to upgrade once they have 4K in each eye. All right. And uh, our final piece of news, this is pretty cool. Um. So uh, an individual by the name of Gabriel Pyron spent four years remastering Street Fighter II Champion Edition for Sega Genesis. <laughs> so this is insane. This is insane. But I love to see stories like this. Man, I wish these pictures were higher detailed. Um, so what, what did he do? Um, there's a new HUD design. Um, the there's a new text, new world map where you like select the levels. New character portraits. Um, the animation frames have been updated. New artwork has been added to increase detail. Um, ending se sequences made to be like the arcade versions. Gameplay fixes for rebalancing the game. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I love to see when, um, like, fans of a game, like indie developers like this guy, uh, just kind of, like, pour their heart and soul on a game that they love. Now, this is my original copy of the game. Um, this is obviously a repro case. I lost my original case. But this is uh, my cartridge um, from when I was a kid. I mean, it's still in amazing condition, believe it or not. So, yeah, I love this game. It was my one of my favorite games as a kid. I'm going to download his uh, patch, and I'm going to patch it. And I'm going to try to put up a video on our YouTube channel so you can all see. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's it for this week. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, yeah, I mean, please like and subscribe if you like the show. Um, I want to keep doing it. We have a podcast version available too. So yeah, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. And we'll see you all next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this episode of Games I Speak. If you liked the episode, please subscribe and leave a comment below. And we'll see you all next time.